This is about why you're never too old to start again. Now, the biggest mistake people make is that they quit too early. Hi, everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at the uh, BloomerBoomer.com Lifestyle Magazine. Our 10th anniversary is coming up, by the way, and I just finished reading the book Ageless Startup by Rick Tureen, who is a visionary and award-winning writer about post-retirement and people who make a difference in industry and innovation by creating new solutions for today's world. Now, I am really excited uh, to talk with Rick. Now, these shows, they're different. <laughs> we have a variety of interesting guests with a, a slightly quirky format, and in my background here is this uh, virtual video game I'm mastering all for a, a powerful, passive learning experience that I really hope you, ex you get. Now, other shows coming up tomorrow is Roger Firestein, a PhD, is author of Create in a Flash, a leader's recipe for breakthrough innovation. On Friday, we are going to be taking a look at a new tablet PC for the, let's call Digitally Challenged, and you can participate in the shows that are streamed uh, to Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And you can also like us, and you will get notified about some upcoming shows. So, let's get started. And I love marmalade. Well, welcome, uh, Rick Tureen. I'm really, really excited you are here. And uh, how are you managing in the circumstances in which we are all living today? So thank you for the invitation, Andy. I appreciate it. And happy anniversary on the show. It's exciting. Oh, thank you Ten very years. much. It's remarkable. Uh, so we're all entrepreneurs. We've all faced these kind of things in the past. We've been through these recessions. This one is going to be a significant one. I think it's going to affect mm -hmm. older workers significantly more than the ones we've been through in the past. So that's why I'm glad that we got this resource in place. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about your book. You must have seen something about post-retirees that caused you to think there is a desire or a necessity to do something more in what traditional retirement used to be all about. Well, correct. We're all living longer. Most of us, the actuarial standards, we're all living longer. We've got to continue to support ourselves. But even more importantly, this, you know, 50 is the new 30, whatever the phrase yeah. might be there. We've still got a lot of good we can do and a lot of contributions that we can make and want to make to our communities and to industries we love. And uh, this is almost a perfect time of age to do it. You can transition from paid employment if possible and to slowly and get this set up carefully and uh, transition into doing the kind of work where you can make those contributions, not just um, chase after the shekels. Yeah, yeah, that's really a, a good point, and uh, maybe we can come back to that, uh, because all of our life, <laughs> in effect, that's what we've been doing. Now, for some people, the transition from a, a lifelong employee to being the owner and the boss, it's a long step to take. You know, how do you describe that tr transition? So I think the idea that I want to get in people's minds, first of all, is that this has been taught to us, if you're an older person, it's been taught to us from the early days that it's very scary to start your own business. Indeed, indeed, isn't it, though? That, yeah. And, and uh, sometimes um, one experiences that after they've already taken that step uh, to begin, but then maybe it's too late and you have no choice but to plow ahead. Well, I'm going to suggest that there's a different paradigm, actually, in the world we're living in now. It may have been scarier when... It was the 1960s and 70s to start your own business than to go to work for a major corporation. Right now, I think it's scarier not to have your own small business. It doesn't have to be a world-beating monopoly and you're in the, you know, on the cover of business magazines with the 20-year-old billionaires. It can be a very small enterprise, but this is it is much scarier not to have some fallback. If you leave yourself at the whim of these corporations or worse the whims of these crazy economies we're in uh you can find yourself on the outside looking in so it just strikes me that this is a really good time to get yourself a little more resilient 
and a little more prepared to act independently and to develop an independent cash flow. Well, Rick, um, we were talking briefly off camera about you, and uh, I thought I found that pretty fascinating. Can you touch upon that a little bit? So my own work, um, I have been a lifelong entrepreneur. I ran one long run business that uh, we took it to 25 years. I sold it when it was 25 years old and it was still running at 40 years. Um, when I sold that one, I took a, I generally sell these for sabbaticals, not crazy money. That may happen someday, but I don't think so. I took a sabbatical, started a, another one. I ended up getting a number of patents in that. We won a number of really generous, globally relevant awards. It became the Fast 50, which is the 50 most innovative, innovative companies in the world. Uh, it was given a new product of the year, small business new product of the year for the entire United States. And uh, we sold that one. I left that one when it was 10 years old. It's now 20. Uh, so I've got a 40, a 20, and a 10 underneath my belt right now. Um, and here I was recently recruited to help do launch a new startup where I am right now. I moved to Pittsburgh to help, of all things, start a new uh, system here with some partners. And uh, it's working in recreating more resilient food systems. And we've been at this about a year or two without knowing the pandemic was coming. But boy, is it timely. That, that's fascinating. Um, so you are unique in the sense that you've done this you've been through it does it take a personality type or is this something that can be learned well it absolutely can be learned i think most people do stuff that's way harder in their life than starting a business um you know the end of my book and the, and the takeaway piece that the publisher is highlighting is that it's not hard it's just new um, you know, some people don't like new things, don't gravitate to them, but it's not necessarily laying asphalt in August. This is not all that hard. People can learn this and you don't have to become a, you know, a superhero to do this. This is people have been taking care of their communities and their neighbors through small enterprises for thousands of years, long before we ever invented an MBA program or uh, business schools. Uh, it's something we can all do. It's, it's based on common sense. And that's what I tried to put in the book. So generally just common sense stuff that most people have under their belt already. They just need the permission to explore it. They need to find out this is not anything all that special. This is not wisdom from on high brought down to us in you know, tablet form. This is something you can put one foot in front of the other. And within a couple of months, if you're not all that crazy about going too fast, which I advise against and say, take this slow. Um, you can have a small enterprise in place in a short few months and uh, be ready to take it out for a, a trial runs. Uh, uh, trial run, that's a, a good, good word, a good way to describe it. And, and common wisdom is uh, doing something you know about it. That, that's sort of been a, a, a common bit of advice. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense, but I know some people want to undertake uh, a venture that, let's say they're just passionate about. What would you uh, tell those folks? So I love this idea of passion, and I honor that by telling people that the subject area, the field they are working in, they should be passionate about it. It should be something they really care, care about. Um, but I, there's also um, a, a little bit of a false narrative in some of these discussions in that, oh, you can start your own business and just be passionate about what you do every day. And you're tripping through the wildflowers and a mountain lake is in the background. You know, they, this is why they call it work. There's a lot of work involved in this stuff, too. You've got to show up. You've got to do it. Um, but the thing to be passionate about is the goal, is the outcomes. And you have to put good, solid work plans in place to get yourself and get your little small business there. You know, I think uh, I grew up in an era when uh, failure was the worst word in the vocabulary under anything that you started. Um, how do you view that word, failure? It's just the inverse of where it was when we were younger people. Right now, employers of all kinds and work partners, customers, everybody wants to hear that you've got 
entrepreneurial juice in your approach to life. And failure is just a part of that. And in fact, it's the old Thomas Edison thing. He said, you know, I didn't, there wasn't 10,000 ways that I was a failure. I found 10,000 ways that something didn't work. And uh, that puts you in advance of almost everybody in the planet. Your little bit of failure is something that uh, makes you smarter than the next guy. Um, yeah, that's, an asset. Of, that's an asset. That's a what? That is an asset in your career is to have some failures. Yeah. And uh, as you can probably speak from experience to some degree. When you want to make as many as you can and you want to make them as fast as you can, you just don't need to throw a lot of money at it. That's where people make uh, improper mistakes here is throwing a lot of resources, especially money, at an issue. There's all kinds of ways in this day and age with everything online to test your ideas quickly and inexpensively. Uh, where the failure comes is misunderstanding that and think that entrepreneurship and small business is about money. It's not. It's about outcomes. Yeah, and you admit to the rocky terrain of entrepreneurship, and I'm wondering, unless you've done it, uh, is is uh, is anyone uh, prepared for that, or uh, what's the best view to look at that possibility or that eventuality? Sure. Well, the idea is, is in my world, in my it's especially laid out in this book, is there's three basic tenets you've got to take into this subject area. The first is permission. And what you want to do is give yourself permission to start small. Um, you can't measure yourself against anybody else. This is your entity, your uh, enterprise, your goals. Uh, so you want to start small. Uh, something most people don't know. There's 32 million businesses in the United States right now. Of those 32 million, 25 million are one-person businesses. And most of those are part-time. So there is no tried and true and written in stone way to deploy these businesses once you launch them. You can work half time. The, um, the next part about start, after starting small is to do your planning correctly. It's permission, planning, and practice are the main three here. And on planning, you want to start smart. You just want to think this through. You want to run through the checklists. You don't want to throw money at this situ situation. You can start a small business for a few hundred dollars. Uh, but you do want to run through the checklist on how you want to go forward with this. It's a, always a problem to try to fix things while you're in the middle of a problem. It's much easier to have a guidebook that you can turn to and say, when you've got a problem, here's how we're going to behave. So getting that uh, planning session, the planning stages right, is really valuable, even for a small one-person business, maybe even more so. Mm -hmm. um, and then the practice part of this. The practice part is just like an accounting practice or a law practice, uh, you want to treat this as a professional practice. It's, it's, it's not just your one person, oh my gosh, I'm just such a little business. Nope, you want to get better with every single transaction and you want your business to get better with every single transaction. So my recommendation under this permission planning and practice is to start right now. It's going to take longer than you expect. Everything in the world does. I'm, of an age where I've come to know that as a truism. Everything takes longer than you want. So, but that's not a reason not to start. It's a reason to get going and understand that it's gonna take a little more time than you thought. Yeah, now I've uh, absorbed myself in the startup world of today, which I just find uh, fascinating. Uh, you know, the world of, of uh, startups and the world of venture capital, investing and investors, and most importantly, the visionaries with the ideas is there a single classic uh, personality, you might say, that defines those folks uh, who, who made it? After all, the famous entrepreneurs like, you know, like Steve Jobs and Sir Richard Branson and Andrew Carnegie and all, and they've suffered failure of one kind or another, but they, they, uh, they survived and, and then they flourished. Uh, so uh, the, there are examples of people, I guess, who have persevered, among other things. Uh, without a doubt. And you put your finger on one of my favorites, which is Steve Jobs. Uh, he was thrown out of his company. He was yeah. <laughs> in disgrace. Mm -hmm. um, and now this is what the most valuable company in the world or among them. Um, and what I liked about Jobs especially is he didn't rely on customer surveys. He said customers don't know what they want until you show it to them to show them something better. And I'm, I'm for 
this level of operation, I think that's entirely true. You work on brilliant, simple, easy to deploy solutions and put them in place. Don't try to anticipate and do Google SEO optimization and keyword searches. Forget that stuff. Jobs was like that. He, he dove right at the problem and he came out with elegant solutions every time before anybody anticipated them. Wow, that is a key description. I, 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 it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, as we wind down um, a little bit, uh, Rick, what uh, message do you want uh, viewers to be left with today? Well, I'm anxious that they do hear this message that it's not that hard. It's just new. Uh, that's really a, a key thing. Over the last decades, this has been promoted, this entrepreneurship and small business startup is from has been promoted as something uh, very complex. And there are complex parts of it. The, the, the pieces you were just describing with the venture, venture capital and the, the special offers and the stocks and the series A's and all of that stuff uh, can sound like you're talking to Greek, Greek to somebody. Um, when in fact, the kind of one person businesses I'm talking about, and they don't have to stay at one person businesses, they can grow them, but to get yourself in place and wake it up take a few deep breaths, that one person slow deployment startup is not especially hard. And once you're in the game, you've got a hard shell around you. It's not just you personally, you can take it out for a walk, start interacting with other entrepreneurs. I'm a great uh, advocate of this not being a lone ranger kind of a model where one person has all the answers and I'm gonna fix this really complex solution all by myself because I'm such a brilliant entrepreneur. It doesn't work that way anymore, rarely works that way, and I don't see it virtually at all. The way these things work, and especially is valuable for you as a small startup, is that once you have your LLC or your legal shell around yourself, you can reach out and start talking to other people in your field that you've admired and that are in the similar situations. And then as opportunities come up, you can put together ad hoc teams of other entrepreneurs, divvy up the workflow, divvy up the monies involved. Uh, that's the way that the 21st century is going to come together around entrepreneurship. I'm convinced this is no longer a one person. It's a it's a person with a network, person with multiple networks, and we have those what I call know-how networks available to us right now. Um, putting them together into a small business network around you is the most valuable thing you can do. Hmm. Um, how can folks learn more about you? Well, thank you. There's a website for the book. It's ageless-startup.com. Ageless-startup.com. There's a blog on there uh, that collects interviews and podcasts and interviews that have been done and articles that I've been writing for different publications. There's also a page with a long list of ways to order. There's, you can certainly do the usual suspects, the Amazons and the Barnes and Nobles, but they've also got some really good links to independent bookstore networks so you can buy the book and support your small independent bookstore at the same time. Very good. Well, um, stay right there for one moment, Rick. I just want to uh, give everybody, here's the, here's the book, but I just want to give everybody an update on today's game journey. Uh, and if you've uh, ever wanted to do something that has uh, kind of a wonderment about it with beautiful music in the background, uh, a, a journey that uh, you learn as you go, it's fantastic. And it is uh, very soothing and relaxing. And uh, it, you've got to play it in order for it to make sense, which is the wonderful part of it, because there's a sense of discovery. So that's the game I'm trying out today. And... Uh, I want to just close out with uh, uh, thanking Rick and show you, the again, his book, Ageless Startup, uh, Rick Terrine. And uh, uh, Rick, thanks. And I think you have got some real wisdom that uh, people can learn and earn by. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. And I'm happy to communicate with anybody if they've got questions. Very, very good. Well, you can uh, you can get the book uh, here at bloomerboomer.com. You can watch the replay on Facebook, YouTube, and at bloomerboomer.com. And until then, I would uh, say to you, I would say so long, and remind you that I love marmalade. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, very good. Let me just... Uh...